Good morning. God is so good. Jesus is walking with his disciples after his resurrection. And he reminds them in the Gospel of John about just who he is. During his time with them, he is showing himself for what he had said to them. I'm the Good Shepherd. This morning we just want to look at some of the scriptures which define the Master's heart, being a shepherd. It's actually a beautiful picture of one who leads, leads with compassion, leads with hope, leads with assurance, leads with strength, leads with enablement to bring about our nurture and our health and our growth. Let's read together John chapter 10. We're just going to take a few verses. We're going to do from 11 or from 11 to the end of verse 18. Jesus says this of himself. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. When the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it, the man turns away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there'll be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This commandment I have received from my father. To me, it's very fascinating that Jesus would start by saying, I am the good shepherd. Many believe that Jesus it was invoking the name of God, Yahweh. And he is saying to those who are listening to them, I am the good shepherd. I am that shepherd that David talked about in Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. There we have the name of God named there as God our shepherd. How important it is for us to understand the shepherd and a shepherd's heart. How important it is for us to realize that in the days in which we live, how much we need to hear that voice of the shepherd and just to continue to listen to him and to realize that following him, he leads us to green pastures. He leads us beside still waters. He restores our soul. It's amazing to me how people like are looking for God in all the wrong places. And here we have God showing himself for who he is. I am your shepherd. I want to take you on a journey. A journey that is not hard. Or arduous. Think of what a shepherd does. I've got here listed in front of me some quali qualities of a good shepherd. Let me just read them to you. One thing is that first thing is that 
a shepherd has boundaries. He understands his flock. He understands the strongest and the weakest. And he never goes faster than the weakest to ensure that the flock stays together. Think of the parable that Jesus himself said of the 90 and 9. He said, a shepherd had a hundred sheep. He came home with 99 of them. He made sure that they were secure in the pen and that others were looking after them. And then he went back. It's nighttime. He went with a torch to light his way. And he went back to where he had been with the sheep. He retraced his steps. He went back to find the lost one. Think of the arduous journey that the shepherd would have had. Think of all of the things that could have happened but didn't. And finding the lost he doesn't just berate it. He doesn't just give it a cuff on the back. Oh, no. He lifts it in his arms and he puts it on his shoulders. Why? Because the lost sheep has found himself in a place where all of his energy has been spent on trying to figure out where it is. And so he puts it on his shoulders and he goes back home again by torchlight, by the stars, the heavens, by the moon, if it happens to be shining. He makes his way back and introduces the lonely one back to the fold. Never let it be said that God doesn't care about me. Never let it be said that somehow God forgot about me. God always cares. He never forgets. In fact, in Ezekiel, it says that I myself will be the shepherd to the people. I myself will go out and find the scattered ones. I myself will bring them back together. That's the heart of a shepherd. He knows the boundaries as in he knows his flock. He understands our heart, where we're at. He never takes us faster than what we have strength and ability to do. But at the same time, he leads us to places where we can find nourishment so that our strength would increase and so that we would be better suited to, to do the master's work. One of the second thing is that he's an example. In other words, he goes ahead of the sheep. He leads them. I think of that verse of scripture in, in Ephesians Chapter 2, verse 9, where it says that God has, we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which he has prepared for us to do. How has he prepared them? He's gone ahead and he's made the way. But what's interesting is, is that we're coming into the Pentecost season and that's where we going to talk about how God enables us through the power of God, the Holy Spirit, to be all that we can be. Think of Jesus on the last and great day of the feast, standing forth, proclaiming in a loud voice, come unto me, all ye that thirsty, and I will give you water that flows from your innermost being. And he was talking about God, the Holy Spirit. And 
enablement, refreshing, of a refreshing that flows out from us that refresh, refresh, refreshes the lives of those who hear his heart and his word. He's the example. Think of how time and again the people sought him out. He didn't look for them. He didn't have to have billboards. He didn't have to have loudspeakers out there saying, here I am. Oh, no. The people were constantly looking for him. They were constantly wanting to be in his presence. That's a refreshing. That's because God the Holy Spirit was working through him. And he says it himself. Jesus says it himself. The things I'm doing, I'm doing because of the Holy Spirit. I'm doing it because the Father's doing. I'm only doing what I see the Father doing. And he just does that. And he brings it into being. And people, people, the common people, wanted what he had. Why? Because in the hopelessness of their lives, they saw hope. In the darkness of the times in which they lived, they saw light. Light that gave them hope and encouragement that God had not forgotten them. God does not forget. The other thing about a, a shepherd is that he's trustworthy. Think of what Jesus just finished saying. He's saying, the hired man is not trustworthy. Why? Because he's he doesn't own the sheep. One of the most fascinating things about working in the regular work world is when you're given a position and you're asked to look after something, how do you do it? Do you do it with your whole heart? Or do you kind of just do it half-heartedly? Do you give yourself to it? Do you take ownership for what you're doing? Because if you take ownership for what you're doing, how you do what you're doing becomes very different. And others see that. You have to take ownership. The shepherd takes ownership of the sheep. Whether they're his or not, that doesn't matter. As far as he is concerned, the moment they have been put into his hand, they are his his to look after, his to ensure their safety, his to ensure that they are fed properly. And that's how God works. Do we work like that? Do we exemplify the shepherd's heart? Jesus says to you and me, I'm the good shepherd. I lay down my life for the sheep. I am willing to go out of my way to ensure that the sheep are looked after. Time again, we read that both in the Old Testament and in the New. That the shepherd has come. That we might have life and have it to its fullest extent. He gives us everything or he ensures that we have everything we need for life and godliness if we would follow him. And that means that we need to cultivate hearing his voice. Very important. Listening to him. Knowing who he is. Knowing his voice. Jesus says that as the Father knows me and as I know the Father, so I want you to hear me in the same relational sense of being we hear his voice we listen to what he says why because he's the good shepherd he's only got our best interests at heart and we need to walk the paths of righteousness for his name's sake paths of righteousness in other words they're 
a path that's already been checked out, look, scoped out, as it were, a shepherd worthy of his, his, his title of being a shepherd always scopes out the territory that he's taking the sheep to. He ensures that the sheep are going to a place where they're going to be fed, where they're going to be nurtured, where there's going to be ample water, where there's going to be a place where they can find all they need. I got lots more to say on Jesus being the Good Shepherd. So let's continue next week on Jesus being the Shepherd. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you have sent the Shepherd to look after us. I pray, O oh God, that each one of us who listens would hear your still small voice speak hope and life into our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.